So you're one of the lucky ones. Either you've just gotten yourself a brand new AR-15, or you're really in the market you want to buy one because, quite honestly, they are the most popular rifle in America right now, and they're a great defensive tool. We'll talk a little bit about how this gun works and what you need to know before you get out to the range, but first, let me ask you to stick around all the way to the end of this video because we have a gun giveaway that you can enter. It's absolutely free and it's going to end soon. Hi, I'm Kevin Michalowski. I'm Director of Content for the U.S. Concealed Carry Association. And if you're new to this channel, I want you to understand that we're here to help you, help prepare you for everything you'll encounter before, during, and after a self-defense incident. So let's jump in and start talking about America's rifle, the AR-15. There it is, the big black scary rifle you've been hearing about on the news. People want to ban them. Nobody needs to own one of these, so forth and so on. Well, it's just a rifle. It is a conglomeration of parts and it happens to be nice and lightweight and small caliber. It's easy to shoot and it works very well for personal defense. So let's do a quick breakdown. The standard configuration of the AR rifle that you're going to see today most times is this carbine version. It's a 16 inch barrel and it has a collapsible buttstock on the end so you can extend or collapse the buttstock for storage or smaller stature shooters or something like that. The rest of the gun, Basically simple and straightforward. We have the grip area here, the trigger and the trigger guard. You can see right in there. And then what we call the action. Notice the action is open now. I will hit the uh, bolt release and here we'll close the action. You can see it move. There we go. That's closing the action. Let's open that. Lock it open so that everybody watching understands that this rifle is now safe and incapable of firing. This is the magazine well. You see that it is empty. And there's, of course, a magazine. Lots of different kinds. This happens to be um, just one that's made by Magpul. Uh, doesn't matter. It, it's a magazine. It holds the rounds that you're, uh, you're going to be firing. So let's talk a little bit about the AR-15. And I will preface this by saying I am no expert in the AR-15. I know how the gun functions. I know how it works. I've actually built and assembled a couple of my own rifles here, but I just want to give you a quick overview so that you know what you're talking about. So the AR stands for Armalite Rifle, not Assault Rifle. The Armalite Division of the Fairchild Aircraft Company is where this rifle was designed by a guy named Eugene Stoner, and AR-15, that was the designation given to it, okay? Um, you'll hear the AR Pattern Rifle, there's also an AR-10, it's a little bit bigger caliber. Um, this is the this is the round right there that we're talking talking about shooting from the AR-15 5.56 by 45. That's the uh, the caliber 5.56 caliber by overall 45 millimeters long. So we've got that going for us. Now let's talk about parts of the gun and how it operates. The typical AR-15 is a gas-powered semi-automatic rifle. That is some of the gases that are released when the round is fired are used to operate the action. In the standard version of the AR-15, it was built as a gas impingement gun, and that just simply means that part of the gas, there's a hole in the top of the barrel right here. Let me get this in front of you. This is called the gas block, and a lot of people are gonna be talking about this right away because if you know a lot about AR-15s, you know that this gun right here is called a gas piston gun, a little bit different than the gas impingement version. So we'll talk about the two differences and let you understand a little bit about those. But both of them work the same way. There's a hole in the top of the barrel that releases some of the gas when the round is fired. And that gas, then on a gas impingement gun, the gas travels all the way through a gas tube to the face of the action, to the face of the bolt and the bolt carrier group. And that gas pushes the bolt to the rear to eject the spent cartridge, the cartridge you just fired, it ejects the spent shell casing and pulls a new shell casing off of the top of the magazine, a new round off the top of the magazine as the bolt comes back forward under spring pressure. That spring is inside the back end of the buttstock of the gun. This is the buffer tube that's down in there. And there is a buffer, a spring inside this buffer tube. So the difference between gas impingement and the gas piston gun 
is just how clean the system operates. With a gas impingement system, some of that unburnt powder and residue and things like that will be going down the gas tube and end up on the bolt face on the carrier group in, on the bolt carrier group inside your firearm. With a gas piston gun, all of that gunky stuff stays out front and you get a little bit more heat out front, but the gun is cleaner. It's easier to clean when you're done at the end of the day, things like that. So they both operate on basically the same mechanism, taking some of the gas from the fired cartridge to operate the system. So now we're talking about the magic of the firearm and how it's all going to work. So we've got the action open. I'm gonna close it now so that you can see the basic operating controls. So we'll turn the gun over. On this side, we have the bolt catch. So when you fire all of your rounds, the bolt gets locked open to the rear automatically by the magazine follower. So push that bolt catch and there you hear the bolt, the bolt carrier group coming forward. And that's what loads your gun and gets it ready to fire when there's a live magazine, a fully loaded magazine with live rounds in it. On the back side over here, we have the magazine release and the dust cover. So the dust cover keeps dirt and debris out of your gun. And when it's closed, keeps the gun nice and clean and make sure that you can carry it wherever you want. When the bolt cycles, and here I'll do this manually, you see that the dust cover pops open. So I'll close the dust cover so you can clearly see. Beneath that is the magazine release catch right down there. So you push that magazine release catch and then the magazine drops out and you can insert another one. On the other side of the gun, and sometimes these are ambidextrous, we have the safety. So, no pew. Where is it? There I can find it. Pew. No pew. Pew. So, that's how that's working. Now, if this were a fully automatic gun, there would be a third position on this safety lever that would move it to fully automatic. It's not. It's not easy to convert. Don't believe the hype. <laughs> when you're talking about an AR, it is a semi-automatic gun. One round, one bullet flies, for one pull of the trigger. Then you have to release the trigger. Here, we'll do that for you now. We'll pull the trigger. You hear it click. Then you have to release the trigger to its reset as the action works. And then you pull it again and you get a click. That's how it goes. Semi-automatic. One round for one pull of the trigger. So that's basically the exterior of the gun. You do see back here, this is what's called a forward assist. So in the time of creating these guns, um, people thought, well, if we're gonna shoot them a lot and they're gonna get dirty, we might need to assist the bolt going forward because it might get dirty. Um, a lot of people tell you to just stay away from using the forward assist because if your gun is so dirty that the bolt won't close, stop your shooting and clean it, please. Um, that, that's gonna be my suggestion. So um, I have never had to use the forward assist for anything other than to explain to people what it is. So. It's, uh, it's there, it will help if you need it, but truly it can be more trouble than it's worth sometimes. So this is the operating handle, right there, the charging handle. So it has a locking mechanism on the side. This handle does not reciprocate. It does not move back and forth like this while the gun is shooting. So, well, when you fire the gun, the cocking handle stays right where it is until you pull it back. Now we're gonna take this thing apart and show you what all the hullabaloo is about, why this gun is so cool, why it works so well, and why it's become so popular. So we've got the bolt forward, we've got the uh, um, gun on safe, and I'm going to use a round, this is just one bullet here, and I'm going to press on the disassembly pin, okay? And you're gonna see what we're talking about when you hear the terms upper and lower receivers. So we move around, the, the disassembly pin on the back, and now the upper and lower receivers are hinged, and truly, I'm just gonna take out the forward pin as well. Beauty of these is that they are captured pins. It means they stick right there on the receiver, and you can see the bolt carrier group coming out a little bit. So, let's start with the lower receiver. This is the lower receiver of an AR-15. This is the part that is actually a firearm, it has the serial number on it. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms wants to know what your serial number is when you buy this from a federally licensed firearms dealer. And you can see it is quite a simple operation. It's basically a hunk of aluminum 
that houses the trigger and fire control group inside here. Now, we can move this. This is in the fire position, and there's the hammer. The hammer is operating when I pull the trigger, and I can push that back, and when the bolt carrier group comes back, it recocks the hammer, and then I have to pull the trigger one more time to make the hammer move forward. And then the hammer is reset. This is your buffer down in there, and I hear you, you can hear that spring loaded. The spring is what pushes the action back into battery to make this gun fire. Now we're talking about the upper receiver. This part of an AR-15 is not classified as a full firearm because it does not have a fire control mechanism or fire control group with it. So you can buy an upper receiver, a complete upper just like this, if you can find one, and they can mail it right to your house. So um, understand that the upper is not technically a firearm, needs to be mated to the lower. So we talked about the bolt carrier group and the charging handle. Let's take those out and show you how easy it is to disassemble this gun and field strip it. So charging handle, just a very simple piece of aluminum that operates the, the bolt carrier group and helps you pull it back. Bolt carrier group, this is where all of the work is done in the gun. Right there in the center, I hope that you can take a quick look at that. You'll see that the uh, firing pin hole is right there. The firing pin comes through the center face of this bolt. The bolt locks up to the lugs inside. I'm getting a little bit of dirt on things here. The bolt locks up to the lugs inside the barrel to make a nice tight lock up to operate the gun. And really, that's all there is to it. The forearm, you know, I think we've talked about this before. Um, <laughs> When you're using an AR-15 or you're building an AR-15, it's like Lego blocks, man. You can put all sorts of different types on here. So I just use the plastic, same basic forearm on this firearm. I don't need anything special, but you can get Picatinny rails. You can get all sorts of other stuff on the front side of this gun um, to make it work. When you're cleaning your gun, you take it apart. You take the bolt carrier group out. You wipe it down. You clean all the gunk off of it, and then you run your your rod and your swab through the barrel and clean out the barrel and then you can put it all back together. And I'm gonna do that now quickly for you just to show you how easy it actually is. We're dropping the charging handle in place. We slide the bolt carrier group into its unit right there. I'm gonna close the, uh, the dust cover and I pushed one of the captured pins in. I shouldn't have done that and I'm, I'm slowing myself down. And then we just attach the pivot pin here in the front and push it into place. And then we close up the gun at the back end, bolt carrier group down in. And again, I shouldn't have pushed those pins in. I just wanted things to be neat and tidy. And bolt carrier group down in. And we're back together. Run the bolt, function check, the bolt's working. Trigger is working, we hold the trigger to the rear, run the bolt again. Now we can reset the trigger, and the gun is reassembled and functioning. Those are the basic elements of how an AR-15 works. They're super simple firearms. They're easy to maintain, they're easy to shoot, they're eminently capable as a self-defense tool, and if you decide that you want to own an AR-15, don't be intimidated by it. It's just a gun, it is just a group of firearms parts, once you take a good close look at it, you'll see it's easy to handle, it's easy to clean, and it's really, really enjoyable to shoot. Thanks for sticking around all the way to the end of the video. As promised, we've got a gun giveaway. It's going on now, but it does end soon. All you have to do to learn about this is click on the link down below and we'll reveal what brand new gun you can win. I'm Kevin Mikulowski, Director of Content for the U.S. Concealed Carry Association. If you like videos like this, please subscribe to this channel and click that notification bell. We'll notify you every time we come out with a new video. Until the next video, stay safe.